Hey guys, welcome back to my small engine repair channel. Today I've got another snowblower repair video for you guys. Today I'll be showing you how to replace the friction disc on your Arian snowblower. And this snowblower is the Arian's Platinum 30. It's a fairly new machine. And this snowblower here has the hard disc like this. It's made of metal and rubber. Some of the newer machines have a different disc. Now I'm going to get right into the repair right away. The first thing you want to do is make sure your gas tank is not overfilled with gas here. If you do have too much gas in your gas tank, it may drip out when you have it tilted up. So if you have a lot of gas in there, just remove a bit. What works really good if you're working at home is just a regular turkey baster. Suck it out until there's about just a little bit left in the tank. So when it's tipped up, it will not drip out. And make sure your oil cap is tight. And by the way, this snowblower is model 921029. And I've got the machine tilted up like this. It's the best way to work on it. And you can use a brick, a jack, anything at the bottom here to just tilt it up back a bit. The first thing I'm going to do is remove both wheels. The very first thing you need to do is to remove this clip. Twist it a bit and pull up. And just do the same on the other side as well. So once you have the clips out, just pull out the wheels. Now you have to watch when you pull out the wheels because there is a small key that will come off the shaft. And there it is right here. So just grab that, put it in a safe area. And there will be a key as well on this shaft too. And unless the key is lined up to the top of the shaft, it will end up on the floor like this. Now the next step will be to remove the six bolts that hold the belly pan. Two up top here, two on each side like that. And here's the other side. And you'll need a 3-8 socket to do this. Today I'm using my impact to remove them. So you probably noticed a piece of rubber or something fell when I took the cover off and the bottom pan is full of rubber shavings. And here's a close up look at that piece. That looks like a piece of the friction disc which I'll be replacing. And these look like rubber shavings from the friction disc as well and the belts maybe. And here's the friction disc. The rubber's pretty thin on it. Let's turn it. There we go. There is a piece of rubber missing and it's exactly the piece that fell on the floor. Look at that. So it's a good thing the customer brought it in because he would have been metal on metal. And if you don't replace the friction disc soon enough, you will end up damaging this plate as well, which is a lot more money and labor. Now, before continuing any further, you want to locate this one pin on the shaft that holds the friction disc. It's kind of like a clip, I guess. Grab yourself a good pair of pliers and remove it. Just pull. This is what it looks like. Now I'm going to remove the three 3 8 bolts here. Now sometimes the plate is stuck on the bearing. Now if that happens, just spray with WD-40 or something like that. So what's happening now is the whole shaft is coming off. So you have this metal piece here that goes on top. I'll show you exactly where this goes when I reassemble the machine. And you're going to have a washer at the bottom here. Now I just want to give you a look inside here. When you pull the shaft, there will be a sprocket over here that is in the chain. You can just leave the sprocket in the chain like that. And then just pull the shaft on the left side of the blower. And keep one hand on the friction disc assembly when you do that. So just coming back to this part, you don't necessarily need to take it out if you just pull out the whole shaft like I did. The bearing is a little stuck on the shaft, so it's a lot easier to get it off when you have the shaft right off the machine. And then you can reinstall it with anti seize So now I've got the friction disc assembly off. Now I'm going to remove the disc, put on the new one. Now you'll need a half inch socket or wrench. And now you have it off. Now the disc I'm using today is an organ replacement. And here's the part number. 
76-067-0. I do have a link in the video description to where you can buy this online. And I have noticed that the aftermarket Oregon friction discs last longer than the original Arians. So this disc here has a few extra holes. That's because it fits on different machines. All you want to do is line up your holes. Now, if you do want to buy the original Arians friction discs, you're looking at these part numbers here. I think this number here was superseded from this one on the left. Now, when I do these repairs, I like to put the blue Loctite, the number 242, on those bolts. You don't need much, but it just gives it that extra edge so that the, the bolts don't come off. I'm just going to slightly snug them on a low setting with my impact here. The best way to tighten up the bolts is just put your shaft in your vise and put the friction disc assembly on the shaft. And I'll finish tightening up the bolts by hand. And again, just use common sense when you're tightening up the bolts. As I've said for over 10 years now in my videos, we're not working on the space shuttle. So you don't need to be super, super exact. Now, the more you do repairs like this, the more you're going to get a feel for what's tight and not. So if you're starting out, guys, you might want to use a torque wrench. Now, if you want to unjam your bearing from the shaft, you can just slide it into your vise like this and just use a pin punch and hammer it out. And sometimes cleaning the ends of the shafts where the bearings go on helps them to go on smoother after. And as always guys, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. So now before you slide all the parts back in, it's a good idea to grease that shaft. I'm just going to put a bit of lithium grease and I'm going to slide the shaft with the splines heading toward the right hand side of the blower and just get it started inside the assembly here. Now this might be the tricky part to reinstall. It may have fallen. You're wondering how does it go back on? Well, it goes at the top here, right on this part here of the friction disc assembly. And then the washer goes on the bottom part of the assembly right here. So this part here goes in this position, right on that little shaft here. And the washer goes on the bottom part of the friction disc assembly. And now what you want to do is slide both parts of the friction disc assembly in the forks. So I'll give you another view. You can see the washer is in there properly. And also the other weird washer or the square one on top. Now what you need to do is slide the shaft. Make sure you're holding the friction disc assembly. Meet it up with the sprocket over here on the right hand side of the blower and you want to get those splines in that sprocket and once you get it in there just push that shaft in now what you need to do is push the shaft right into that bearing and there it is now it doesn't hurt to put anti-seize at both ends of the shaft and even a little on the bearing here and now just install it back on. Now install the three bolts. I will just start them up with the impact. And always do the final tightening by hand. Now just finish them off by hand and make sure they're pretty tight. Now remember this little clip here, we need to reinstall that. And it goes in the far hole on the shaft, so just turn it up a bit here. There we go. Now I reinstalled them the same way I pulled them out. I just put them in my pliers very tight and then go in and push. I'm not sure why those clips are there, but I always put them back in. So by the way, this was the gear setting. This is where the lever was when I installed the friction disc. Sometimes in certain areas it works better. I find this section works good. And I am adding a little bit more lithium grease. 
If you don't grease this, it's harder to shift gears and sometimes the shaft rusts and you can't shift gears anymore. And what's good to do is to move the shifter. Then it frees up the other side of the shaft to grease it. And you don't want to put too much grease on here, guys, because if you have too much, it could fall on the friction plate here and then your transmission will slip. Now, before I put everything back together here, guys, I like to give the friction plate here a nice good cleaning. What works good for that is straight gas or card cleaner. Today I'm using card cleaner with a nice clean rag. And you'd be amazed at the film of oil that comes off of there or rubber. Then move the shifter and just clean the other side. Now before you put it back together, there is a grease fitting here that you can grease. I'm putting about five shots in there, five to six. And after you grease your machine, go in and check for a blob of grease like that because you don't want that to fall on your friction parts. Then you can just rub that grease on here on the gear. So now that you've got it all cleaned up in there and grease, just do a second check around to make sure everything's in there properly, guys. You just never know, you can forget something. And it's also a good time to check your belts if you're going to replace them, the belly pan's already off. Now what you want to do is clean the belly pan at the bottom. Also what works good is a bit of gas, then grab a rag, it'll come off really easy but be careful. Now at this point I'm ready to reinstall the belly pan. You just want to line up the holes here. Now one quick tip here guys, it doesn't hurt to dip your bolts in some anti-seize because they do tend to rust and seize on the Arians blowers. And now you've got one here left and two on this side as well. So again, I'm just going to start the bolts with my impact at a low setting and then I'll finish them off by hand. And then just snug them tight by hand like this. They don't need to be too tight. It's pretty easy to strip the inner threads inside the machine or on the belly pan. Now the next step I'm going to show you here is quite important for the maintenance of your blower. I'm going to show you where to put the grease and the anti-seize for the wheels. It's quite critical that you follow the same order I'm going to show you because anti-seize is not used as a lubricant. So first of all for the grease just pull the washer back. You can use any wheel bearing grease. Low temp grease is preferred so that it stays softer in the colder months. Just push that grease in so it gets between the shaft and the bushing. And even when you squeeze the washer back on, it does push the grease back in as well. And repeat this same procedure over here. And push the washer in as well. Now since the friction is between the drive shaft and the bushing, I put the grease in there. Now I'm going to put the anti-seize on the shaft because the wheel is stationary on the shaft. If the wheel is moving on the shaft, then I would put grease. And you can use this stuff liberally. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves. This will prevent your wheels from seizing on the shaft, which can get quite costly if you have to try to remove them after. And I'll do the same here. And it's very messy stuff, guys. Now, when you reinstall the wheel, do not forget the key here. If you do not reinstall it, the wheel will not drive. And when you reinstall the wheel, you want to line up the keyway here to the key on the shaft. And now what you want to do is reinstall the clip here. 
Again, put the key right here in the slot. Line everything up. And install the clip on this side now. And you can just wipe up the excess grease with a rag here or the anti-seize. So once you've done all these steps, you're done. All that's left to do is test it out. I'm just going to start it out, vent out the shop a bit. So as you saw in the video guys, the traction is excellent. When you see me holding a blower and holding the lever down, it's to see how good the traction is inside the transmission. So I was holding the blower and you could see the wheels spinning. And if they're spinning on concrete, that means everything's working really, really well. So as you can see guys, it's not that bad. Just bookmark my video, go step by step. It doesn't matter if you fix the snowblower before my videos are designed to help you fix anything that I make a video on, no matter what your skill level is. So please comment guys if you have any tips or tricks that make this repair easier, we always welcome those comments. And as I mentioned in the video guys, I've had better luck with the aftermarket organ drive discs or friction discs like I showed you in the video than the actual OEM Arians ones. And by the way, the link to buy that disc is in the video description. Also make sure you're subscribed to my channel and that you're following me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and have a great day guys.